What's going on guys, it's your boy Mr Woz and in today's video I'll be testing another money maker from the Osiris wiki and this time it's Rune Dragons. Now I'm going to go through all of these money makers no matter how tedious the task is and I'll switch things up depending on what you guys want me to do in the comment section below. Before I start this video I mentioned recently on my community post that I'm doing a 100 mil giveaway but I'll only do that if I reach 3000 subscribers by the end of the month. Now if I do get 3000 subscribers before the end of the month I will add in another 100 mil so that should get you guys to help me out that little bit more and of course 200 mil would be a nice little bonus towards your bank and yeah so all you got to do is just subscribe and get me to 3000 subscribers. Now these rune dragons was released on the 4th of June 2018 and these dragons are really really powerful and these are more high tier than any other dragon. What I like about these rune dragons is that they are great GP per hour as well as XP per hour, very similar to brutal black dragons which is my last video if you want to check that out in the top right of your screen. So according to the Orosaurus wiki you can make around 1.4 mil GP profit per hour which is really really good and that is not including the famous draconic visage which is 1 in 8k drop rate costing 4 mil along with dragon limbs which is 1.6 mil and a dragon metal lump worth 300k. For the XP rates you can gain 65.3k in melee XP, 21.7k in hit points XP and 16.3k in slayer XP as well. But as I'm not doing this on task I won't count the slayer XP so overall a great money maker. The wiki also mentions you can get 9 kills per trip with 5 trips per hour for around 45 kills per hour. Now that doesn't sound like a lot but as I mentioned before these dragons are really really powerful and they hit very often. Also the wiki mentions you can spend around 230k on supplies within an hour which is quite a bit of GP but you will be making 7 times your money back after those supplies. Now before I go into the requirements I'm going to show you how to get to these dragons. Now for those who hasn't been to rune dragons before there will be a one time route and I'll show you now. But first of all you will need a dig site pendant. Now if you don't have this you could buy a ruby necklace in the grand exchange along with 5 fire runes and 1 cosmic rune to enchant it into a dig site pendant. Once you have the pendant you want to teleport to the dig site and run east towards a guard and use the quick travel option and it will take you to fossil island. Once you are here, as you can see on the minimap, you want to go to this location with the arrow icon and you can take one stamina potion if you wish. And once you are here, you will come across a boat, just click on travel and then follow the path northwest until you come across some stairs. Go up the stairs and then go south to the trap door. Go down and just north, you climb up the stairs once again and then you'll be at Lifkarin. Now once you're here you want to follow the path north and as you enter the door you will come across some adamant dragons on the left and rune dragons on the right. Just keep going until you see a strange machine on the eastern side and use your dig site pendant on the machine and you will unlock the Lifgrin teleport on your dig site pendant. Now once you've done this you can have the pendant in your POH like I have and this will save an inventory slot. Also if you have 99 construction you can add a rune dragon in your POH treasure room for 25 mil. Now there is some requirements to make this method efficient so let's start off with the skill requirements. You will need a minimum of 90 plus in your combat stats. It is a high requirement but you will need it to kill these dragons. Next which is really important and that is having a minimum of 37 prayer so you can protect from magic but having 70 plus prayer is more recommended so you can use piety as this gives a temporary 25% boost to your defence, 23% to your strength and 20% to your attack so quite an important prayer that is. Now the only quest requirement is completing Dragon Slayer 2 in order to have access to Lifkrim Vault to start killing the rune dragons. Now for the gear setup there is a few different options and I'm going to go through them with you now from the most effective to the least effective. So firstly for the weapon and shield you can use the Dragon Hunter Lance. Now this is the best weapon to use against these dragons as it gives a 20% boost in damage and accuracy. Also this weapon is really cheap at the moment costing 73 mil as its normal price is well over 100 mil so I will definitely save up for this weapon. Now the next best weapon to use is the rapier but this is a very expensive item costing 150 mil but technically this is the best stab weapon in the game compared to the lance by plus 9 but doesn't give the bonuses like the lance. And the last option is a Zamrakian Hasta which is 15 mil and gives the same stab bonus as the Lance but once again doesn't give the bonuses but this is another option. And for the shields the Vernic Defender is the best for strength bonuses but you will need the Vernic Hilt to attach on the Dragon Defender and this will cost you 60 mil. 
The next shield will be the Dragon Defender on its own and that will be the second best option if you can't afford the Vernic Hilt. And for one of the best defensive shields in the game you can use the Dragonfire shield fully charged and that is what I'll be using for this video. Now for the best armour you can wear and that is full Bandos mainly for the strength bonuses your next option will be full Justicia armour. Now I actually prefer this to Bandos just because you get a set effect that gives you amazing defensive bonuses along with plus 10 prayer bonus which is really good. And the most important, it reduces all combat damage taken when wearing the full set, and the full set costs 45 mil, so it's fairly cheap at the moment. Now, if you can't afford Justicia or Bandos, you can use Torag's Plate Body with Verac Skirt for defensive bonuses. The next best option is the Amulet of Fury. Now, this is fairly cheap at the moment, costing 1.5 mil, and it's a great budget option. Now this gives a minus 2 strength bonus, minus 3 prayer bonus and minus 5 attack bonuses compared to the torture but the fury actually gives plus 15 in all defensive bonuses, plus 10 in magic and ranged attack bonuses as the torture gives none. So like I said a very good budget option if you can't afford the torture. Now for the ammo slot you can wear any blessing but if you have completed the Karen and Kaboss elite diaries you can use the Rada blessing 4 that gives a plus 2 prayer bonus compared to the plus 1 for any other blessing. For the cape slot the best cape to wear is the inferno cape as this gives the best strength bonus in the game which is plus 8 as well as 2 prayer bonus. The next best cape to wear is the fire cape but this gives half the strength bonus compared to the inferno cape but this does give the same prayer bonus so still a good option. Now if you are a max player you can use your normal max cape to teleport to a bank as well as using your POH to regenerate your stats. This doesn't give any bonuses apart from plus 4 in prayer bonus which is better than the other two capes I mentioned and it also gives plus 9 in all defensive bonuses. Now for the gloves you should be wearing ferocious gloves as they are the best mini gloves in the game giving plus 14 strength bonus as well as plus 16 in stab which is what you need against these dragons. To make these gloves you will need a Hydra Leather which you can buy from the Grand Exchange for 6.5mm and you will need to go to Lifkarin Vault along with a hammer to turn your Barra's gloves into Ferocious. The next best gloves you can wear which you can probably guess by now and that is Barrows but they do give a minus 4 strength bonus and minus 4 in attack bonuses compared to Ferocious gloves but you do get plus 12 in defensive stats so these are great for melee. Now for the ring slot you should be wearing the berserk ring especially getting it imbued as this gives double bonuses compared to the imbued ring. And lastly for the boot slot you should be wearing the insulated boots as you can buy them from any slayer master for a few hundred GP um, but these will protect yourselves from the electricity attacks from the rune dragons and wearing these you will only take 1 to 2 damage but without wearing these you could take as high as 7 to 8 damage constantly so it does make a difference over time. Now for the items in your inventory I'm taking one super extended anti-fire which is quite expensive costing around 9.5k per 4 dose but this provides complete immunity against dragon fire for 6 minutes and a normal anti-fire won't be enough against these dragons. Next I'm taking a divine super combat now this is very expensive costing 15.8k per 4 dose but this increases my attack strength and defense by plus 5 like normal but gives an additional 15% uh, boost for 5 minutes and the stats will not drain until the 5 minutes is up compared to a normal super combat. Next I'm taking between 2-4 to four super restore potions and this depends on your prayer level as well. So if you are low prayer level maybe take 4 or 6 prayer potions. Next I'm taking out runes as the dragon drops a lot of rune and the occasional dragon items. If you have a rune pouch this will save a few inventory spaces. Some people do take Venge runes as this will speed up kills a lot but this will cost 1k GP per cast so very expensive over time. Now you will be taking food um, and I would suggest sharks, manta rays or anglerfish or even combo food just because when you're protecting from magic as well as anti-fired up and wearing the dragon fire shield as well as the insulated boots the rune dragons do have special attacks as well as melee attacks which can hit really hard and I'll explain a little bit more on that later on in a video. Now if you're not using a max cape to teleport out you can use a house tablet, glory, ring of jeweling, pretty much anything so you can teleport out to bank etc. Now if you don't have the dig site pendant in your POH you could just simply have it in your inventory to get back to the rune dragons. Now the last item I'm taking with me and that is a Sarodome and Godsword as this can heal me as well as restoring some prayer points. This will increase my max hit by 10% and my accuracy is doubled. So for example if I manage to hit a 60 with the special attack I will heal 30 HP as well as restored 15 prayer points as well. 
Now there's three other items you can take such as a Dragon War Hammer to lower the Dragon's Defense or if you can't afford that you can use a Bandless God Sword and the last weapon will be Dragon Claws as this will help killing the Dragons a little bit faster. And the last optional item is using a Bone Crusher for those who don't care much about GP and wants to get as many kills as possible whether you're on a Slayer task or just killing them in general and this will automatically crush all bones every time you kill a monster giving you half the prayer experience you would have got from burying the bone yourself. Now I have used all of these special attack weapons before and had no luck with them as my RNG hasn't been great but I would suggest trying them all out and seeing what works best for you. Ok so what I'm going to do now is go through the three rune dragon special attacks and then I'm going to go through the drop table, tips and tricks and then the price check at the end of the video. Now the first attack is a standard dragon fire just like what other dragons use but you will be protected from magic and potted up so you won't take any damage. Now the next two are the unique special attacks. So firstly you've got the electricity attack and that is by throwing two small balls on the floor which will then arc to other tiles around you dealing small but rapid damage if you don't move. This is why you need to wear the insulated boots. If you don't feel like tanking the hits you can run around the room to avoid getting hit. The next special attack is a ranged attack which takes the effect of the enhance on its bolts and it will heal the dragon whatever it hits on you so it can hit 35, it can hit 40 so you've got to be very careful. And whilst these attacks are happening the rune dragon can melee you and possibly combo you which can kill you and I have been a victim of that as well so you've got to be very careful with your health. Ok so we're going to move on to the rune dragon drop table, now the drop table is really good so as you can see there's a lot of alkable rune and dragon items. They drop a lot of runes as well as rune arrows. Herbs such as Aventos, Ranar, Snapdragon and Torstall. What I like about this is that you don't get the low tier herbs such as Guams, Taramins etc. Other miscellaneous items such as Javelin Heads, Unfinished Bolts, Runite Ore, Dragon Stones and a Wrath Talisman. And they also have the rare drop table and as you can see there's a lot of various items you can get. And I just want to point out the last few items at the bottom. So you can get a Nature Talisman priced at 900 GP and the drop rate is 1 in 34,679. 1 in 45k for the Dragon Spear. 1 in 52k for the Uncut Diamond. And my all time favourite which is 1 in 104k for the Rune Javelin which is priced at a whopping 900 GP. Not sure why this is um, in the rare drop table and I don't know why this is such a high drop rate but there you go. And the more rarer part of the drop table contains brimstone keys which is what you get from a Konar Slayer task. Next is the elite clue scroll which is 1 in 300 drop rate. Dragon limbs which is 1 in 800 drop rate priced at 1.6 mil and that is how you create the dragon crossbow. Next you can get the dragon metal lump which is 300k and that is how you create the dragon plate body and that is a 1 in 5k drop rate for some reason. And lastly we have the famous draconic visage priced at 4 mil and that is a 1 in 8k drop rate. Now there is some tips and tricks like always when doing this method, some may be fairly obvious but hopefully they will help you out. So in no particular order you want a prayer flick piety. Now this sounds obvious to most people but this is a great way to preserve your prayer as it drains your prayer really fast if you keep it on. The next tip is prayer related as well and that is to keep your preserve prayer on at all times. Now this will only work if you're not using divine potions. This prayer is great as your stats will last a lot longer compared to not having your prayer on. The next tip is keeping your hit points above 50. Now the reason why I say that is because the rune dragon can hit up to 38 and also can combo you with the special attacks as well as melee attacks so you've got to be very careful and stand above 50 hit points is a must. And the last tip is to take a holy wrench with you in your inventory to potentially save a dose of prayer or super restore potion but this is optional. Ok guys so this is the last trip of the hour and I think I've done pretty well so let's tell you out of here and price check everything and see how much I've made. Ok so here is all the loot that I made from one hour of rune dragon so let's price check this and see how much I've made. 1.6 mil very very nice now I was quite unlucky that I didn't get a single dragon piece or any of the rare drops and I also didn't get myself an elite clue scroll as well so my RNG wasn't great but still made a nice amount of GP. So let's minus the supplies that I use, so starting off with 4 extended super antifies which cost me around 37k, I use 3 divine super combats which cost me 47k, I also use 9 super restores which cost me 93k and lastly I use 42 sharks which comes to 29k so the total cost of my supplies is 206k. 
So my total profit is 1,419,253 GP. I also gained 24k in hit points and 25k in my combat stats within an hour as well. So going back to the OSRS wiki and it was saying I could have made 1,455,637 GP profit per hour. So I was only 36.4k short of the target. So pretty much bang on on what the wiki says. Now regarding XP rates, I did manage to gain 10k more XP in range and 2.3k XP more in hit points. But even still, this is pretty much spot on from what the wiki says. So really pleased about that. Now the profits from the previous video ended with 11,240,600 GP and after the money I made from this video which is 1,419,253 GP my total profit now is 12,659,853 GP so very very pleased about that. So that is the end of the video guys, if you like this video make sure you give us a big thumbs up like always, comment below on what money maker I should be testing next and subscribe to the channel if you are new and turn on those notifications so you'll be the first one to watch my videos. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.